Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Arlington Weekly News. I'm Craig Nolan. Thanks for joining us. Bienvenidos. I'm Daniel Pineda. My name's Adele Quo. Bienvenidos. ¿Cómo está, señor Pineda? <laughs> muy bien, muy, muy bien. bien. Gracias. <laughs> Here we go with another show uh, for this uh, somewhere around uh, the middle part of August 2015. Hard to believe the summer's flying by. Flying by. Our usual lineup of news. Uh, and then Adele is here with It's, it's Easy Being Green. Did you guys, how did you guys manage that without yeah, me? Back so into stride. Only Love three it. weeks, that's all. Good to have you back. Good to have Thanks. you back. It's Mr. nice Nolan. to be back here. It's <laughs> nice to be anywhere some days. Uh, our CBB, or Community Bulletin Board file, then another uh, edition of Rich Remembers, Rich our News for Seniors file, and then we'll wrap it up with an interview uh, with uh, Chuck Toftoy, and he's talking with uh, author Michael O'Brien. And that's our show. But before we begin, a social media reminder from my partner. Absolutely, Mr. Nolan. <laughs> you can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News and the number one. And also facebook.com slash Arlington Weekly News. Craig. All right. Thank you, Senor Pineda. Here we go with the first <laughs> of our news items, the news for seniors glasses on the Arlington Chamber of Commerce. Uh, recently has added uh, 17 new member organizations uh, to the commerce. <laughs> they include health providers such as Arlington Dentistry by Design and Arthritis Foundation, a high school, Bishop O'Connell, and uh, technology companies such as Design TLC, home repair companies such as uh, Serve Pro of North Arlington, and entertainment companies like Pinstripes Restaurant. So a uh, Chamber of Commerce in Arlington is expanding. Daniel. 17 new organizations. How That's about great. That? Absolutely. <laughs> well, Craig, in other local economic news, in the face of several key businesses relocating away from Arlington, increased unemployment and relatively low wage increases, Arlington Economic Development's Director Victor Hoskins has proposed a way forward. Hoskins posted his vision for the future in a presentation called the way forward. Visit the website, that's arlingtoneconomicdevelopment.com, to read more about it. Craig. All right, Daniel. And uh, RAPS, W-R-A-P-S, is a county-run, community-based, public-private cooperation program uh, focused on the future development of the Western Roslyn area. The plan includes accommodations for office, retail, recreational, and residential areas, plus a new high school, a fire station, and despite relatively limited space, this is all supposed to happen. It also has the goal of being more walkable, sustainable, green, and have affordable housing. Coming up July 23rd of this year, the county board agreed to a proposal from the RAPS, the WRPS committee, uh, to view the images of the new Roslyn uh, area, visit www.bizjournals.com and search for the Western Roslyn Area Planning Study. Uh, you can also read other details about the plan on the county's website. Daniel. Craig, you know Miriam and Adele are going to like that. Sustainable and green. Green. Well, Capital Bite Share is expanding again. Arlington County was awarded almost $290,000 in federal money to place eight new bite stations between Arlington, Alexandria, and D.C. along the George Washington Memorial Parkway. There is currently only one station along GW Parkway near Iro Jima Memorial on North Mead Street. The additional stations are expected to support tourism along the Potomac River and National Capitol Monuments. To read more about it, visit the county website. Craig. All right, in Arlington County, high school students have done it again. Arlington County students, uh, Washington Lee High School, have exceeded U.S. and global pass rates for the international or IB baccalaureate exams with a 97% mark. The American pass rate is 80 percent and the worldwide pass rate is a little over 71 and a half. Washington Lee pass rate this year is the second best in the school's history. According to their principal, the IB diploma pass rate is a key factor of how they are an indicator rather of how the high school compares with schools all across the country and all around the world. Daniel. Congratulations. You Absolutely. Yeah. W &L. Well, Craig, an Arlingtonian is getting her own TV show. You can watch local sidekick medium Monica 10 Kate on ABC Family's new reality series, Monica the Medium. The show is about her life as a Penn State junior working as a medium 
on the side. It documents the ups and downs of dealing with studying, dating, family, friends, newfound freedom, and confronting the dead. You can learn more about her by visiting the website monicathemedium.com or by going to abcfamily.go.com. Monica the Medium will air starting on August the 25th at 8 p.m. Craig. Monica the Medium. Monica the Medium, yep. All right, Daniel, we'll be back with our CBB, or Community Bulletin Board file, right after we hear from Adele Quo. And it's, it's easy being green. green. Hey, Adele. hey, wow, I love green news. Green it's, news. Hello and greetings. My name's Adele Quo, and it's Easy Being Green. I have some fun update here from last week's invitation to pledge to camp this summer during the National Wildlife Federation's Great American Campout. The summer-long camping celebration is nearing its 100,000 goal with over 96,400 people taking action to protect wildlife in our great outdoors for all Americans. And camping at least once this summer means making the most of your outdoor experience while also taking care to leave a healthier environment when you pack up and head home. So courtesy of Earthshare, easy green tips on your next camping adventure. Experience a local park or campground. The less you travel, the more fuel you'll save and there's more time to kick back and enjoy nature. Local camping is the perfect opportunity to get to know our native plants and animals and the issues they face in our local environment so you can learn something new. Also, pack reusable dishes for your cookouts and campfires. Use biodegradable soap for cleaning up and wash your dishes at least 100 feet from streams, ponds, and other bodies of water. Another tip, ladies, take a break from your beauty routine. Personal care and beauty products can be pretty toxic to the environment. So skip the makeup and perfume for a few days, but don't skip your eco-friendly sunscreen mentioned back on May 20th's Easy Being Green. Next, follow the trail markers. Traveling off the beaten path can do more than get you lost. Trekking off trail can be harmful to our native plants and can cause soil erosion. So, and also please resist the urge to plant, to plant poach. Don't remove plant life from the trail that you're visiting. Next, light up your nights with eco-friendly options. LED flashlights and lanterns require less power and last longer than the non-LED lights. And if you are going to start a fire, keep the flame contained and make sure you use the established circles. And while it may seem obvious, don't burn plastics, food packaging, or metals. Those you should take home with you and properly dispose of and recycle what you can. So the golden rule of camping, always leave your campsite better than you found it and leave no trace where that you were there. And so remember, it's easy being green camping. Mm, very good. <laughs> I heard, once saw a sign at a campsite that said, leave nothing and take only pictures. That's yes. correct. How about that? <laughs> so, are you going camping this summer? Yeah, yeah I, like, I like a sleeping bag every now and then. There you, know? you go. So Excellent. Air mattress underneath it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Thanks, Adele. Nothing wrong with that. Here we go, as promised now, with our CBB, or Community Bulletin Board, file. Well, if you want to take a break from your normal routine and immerse yourself in nature, then consider going to a bat festival. The Save Lucy campaign, a regional bat protection and conservation organization, will present live bat shows. Live bat shows. There will also be uh, habitat walks, bat cave, uh, crafts and games. The event uh, will take place August 22nd uh, from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. at the Gulf Branch Nature Center and Park. Adults and children should register online to attend uh, one of the half hour to 45 minute sessions. Uh, at registration.arlingtonva.us. For more details, give them a call. Here's their number. It should be on your screen there, 703-228-3403. And uh, by the way, the cost is a nominal $8 for yeah, the back show. Bad. Not that bad. Not bad. $8. Daniel. Well, Craig, Roslyn's Movies on the Green are at Gateway Park. That's located at 1300 Lee Highway on Fridays until August the 28th. This year's theme is LOL Fridays, Quotable Comedies. Visit the website at roslynva.org slash do slash outdoor dash film dash fest for more information. And then on August the 21st, you can watch the infamous but adorable Minions creatures who seem to be appearing in advertisements and on merchandise everywhere. 
in their debut movie, Despicable Me. And then on August the 28th, you can catch up with another zany character, Zoolander, in the movie of the same name. So a lot of great events going on in Arlington, Craig. You bet. Always some good stuff down there at Lover Run. They have music, too. Lover Run Amphitheater will uh, continue to present the best musicians from uh, around the area. You can visit www.arlingtonarts.org for more details. Uh, coming up at Lover Run on Friday, August 14 at 8. Music starts about 8 o'clock. You can hear the Whitehold Began Quartet. Uh, William Whitehold Began began his performance uh, at the Sundance Film Festival. He has performed there. Also at the Kennedy Center Millennium Stage, the Smithsonian Museum of uh, American Art, and Atlas Performing Arts Center. He has just finished working on the National Symphony Orchestra and is about to start work with Yo-Yo Ma on his uh, Silk Road Ensemble. Uh, and then coming up on Saturday, August 16 at 8 p.m., you can listen to Rico Amaro's soul music and his particular take on popular modern songs from several different genres. In addition to joining other Washington, D.C. area musicians, Amaro will also showcase performances by his three talented children. And then finally, on Sunday, August 16, starting at 6 p.m., you can listen to blues band B.G. and the Mojo Hands, both uh, Washington Post and the Washington Magazine, Washingtonian Magazine, rather, have written rave reviews about the Mojo Hands. So check them out. That's coming up. Uh, all of this stuff at Lubber Run. All right, we'll be back uh, with our News for Seniors file right after our next edition of Rich Remembers. Hi, this is Rich Masabney with the Arlington Weekly News. It's been over 30 years now, believe it or not. Several years ago, I don't know, maybe it was 10 years ago now, uh, a movie was being made in town in Washington and uh, called Syriana. And uh, it was, uh, you know, it was a big thing. Who, who was the guy in it? George Clooney. George Clooney, okay. So the thing is, because in those days I was bigger than George Clooney, you know, you know what I mean. Um, but uh, seriously, though, uh, Clooney was the guy, and how I got picked. I mean, this was a 20th century Fox thing. I, I remember that. And uh, why they pick me? Well, as some of you may remember or know, I'm a restaurant food critic. So I was making my rounds around town, unbeknownst to me that this Syriana was going on. And there's a restaurant, I just, the name escapes me now, but it's right at 18th and M Street in the district. And um, I was walking through there. It was crowded, it was a Friday. I was, it was crowded. And some guy taps me and says, uh, the producer, uh, would, would like to see you. So I went over there, and I forget his name now. Uh, anyway, uh, he said, you know, you, you'd look good for the part I want here. We're doing a thing, um, and uh, you, you, could, you could work out as a guy. What it is is, is uh, somebody, and there's two people. There's, there's Clooney playing a good guy, and then there's these people who are like uh, 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 Persians, uh, and uh, there was uh, there was uh, so there was some antagonism there in the in the plot, and I the guy thought that I would look good to be next to the right hand man of this sort of bad guy, who who was uh, this Persian guy. Why me? Who knows? But the thing is, so. They had me standing next to this guy. He was about six foot four, uh, a formidable looking guy. And uh, as much as I would try to puff out my chest and cheeks and everything else, I couldn't compare. I would have picked him. So they had me standing next to this guy who was the star from Persia and uh, Iran. And me and the, the director comes over and he says, let me look at both of you. And uh, 
he's looking, he's looking. The other guy was about 35 years old, the one I would have picked. Uh, he, they, they picked me. I was in so many scenes. You know, they tell you about uh, how they cut scenes out. Uh, if, I was in just so many scenes. It, it would have, in my opinion, be impossible to cut me out. For example, there was, um, there was a, a scene on a boat. This was all taken in, this part of a Syriana movie was taken in Greater Washington on the water, Chesapeake Bay Bridge, that kind of thing. Then other parts of it, I mean, were in Europe and all other, that, that I wasn't part of. But they had a, like a little a, a boat, a, you know, a boat with uh, just a couple of us sitting there. I was one of them sitting there, and uh, there was uh, this guy who's this, who's this guy they brought in, and somebody else were all sitting there. And I wonder how they managed to cut me out of the uh, scenes. I mean, because we were exchanging things, talking back and forth, uh, whatever it is, whatever it is, and yet I was on the cutting floor. I wasn't in anything like that. And now let's go back to the news desk. Back, Rich. I need you Come back on. here, sitting, sitting right here at the desk with us. Thanks, Rich. Another edition <laughs> installment of a continuing series of Rich Remembers. Thanks, Rich Masabni. Thank All right, as promised now, our uh, NSS News for Seniors segment. Here we go. Well, if you want to know more about the state of affordable housing in Arlington, and why, why wouldn't you? Mary Rolou, Relay, sorry, Mary, Executive <laughs> Director of the Alliance for Housing Solutions, will lead a discussion on what she calls great spaces that create a valuable housing mix. That event will be coming up on Wednesday, August 19 at 6.30 in the p.m. at Arlington Mill Senior Center. To join in in the conversation, call Arlington Mill at 703, the number on your screen right there, over here somewhere, 703-228-7369. Daniel. Rulo. Rulo. <laughs> Sorry, Mary. Well, are you a hoarder, collector, no, or just no, too no. lazy to throw things away? No, no, well, certified no. professional ordina organizer yeah, yeah, yeah. Maria Spitalnik will discuss hoarding, hoarding disorders on yeah. Monday, August the 24th at 2 p.m. at the Lee Senior Center. Call Lee to register for this free program. That's at 703-228-0555. So, are you a hoarder? Uh, I'm yeah, no, no comment. <laughs> no, We're, no. Sorry, our pronunci pronunciation guide is a little off this evening. It's missing completely, I think. Here we go with the next of our News for Seniors items. The 2015 Northern Virginia Senior Olympics will be held September 12 to the 25th. The deadlines to register are just coming up just around the corner. If you're registering by mail, you have until August 28th. And for online registration, the deadline is Friday, September 4. Registration fee is $12 and covers multiple events. Participants must be at least 50 years of age uh, by December 31st and live in a sponsoring jurisdiction to qualify and to participate. Arlington is one of the sponsoring jurisdictions. For more information, call Judy Misabni at OSAP 703-228-4721 or check out their website, www.nvso.us. And that's our news for seniors file. Uh, we'll be back with a uh, quick bye-bye right after we hear from Dr. Chuck Toftoy and his guest. Charles Toftoy. I'm pinch hitting for Rich Masasby, who you all know. And let's get right to it, because tonight we've got a, a very special guest, Michael M. O'Brien, who wrote two books on Iraq. Mike, good to have you here with us. Chuck. Uh, Mike's a West Point graduate, uh, went in the Army Infantry, Airborne Ranger, got out of the service. Uh, he was a political appointee in the Bush administration, the White House. Uh, worked with the Homeland Security there, State Department, spent 14 months in Iraq where he got, uh, well, he was the senior advisor to the Ministry of Defense there, uh, but during that time he really got some insights and uh, some of the real facts and truths about what really went wrong as far as the U.S. is concerned 
over there. What, uh, why did you write uh, this book? Well, Chuck, I, just do, I do want to clarify, uh, I wasn't the senior advisor, but I was one of the senior advisors yeah. uh, with a DOD contractor over there in Baghdad advising the Ministry of Defense. Yeah. Why did I write, uh, why did I write my, my, yeah, my two books? Uh, my first book, uh, this, is, this is the one that I just came out with, America's yeah. Destruction of Iraq. Right. The first book uh, came out several years ago, America's Failure in Iraq. And I uh, came out with this one to bring it things more up to up to the present day. But uh, to answer your question, I'd been over there. I, I was in. A, I got there to Iraq in uh, uh, July of 2006, and uh, I was just observing and watching all of the things that were going on, the confusion, the waste. Uh, and I, I had. I was a Bush uh, official in the Bush administration, but I. I couldn't understand why we had gone to Iraq in the first place back in 03. I just, it didn't make sense to me. But when I went there in 06, a few years later, I did go there really to, to make a difference, to try and help out. There were problems already. The insurgency was starting up. But after I'd been there about six months, I began to realize what, what a, a real nightmare the whole thing so was. So basically that's why you wrote the book then, to get all that out to unload, to yep. get it all out. Okay. It was basically a cathartic uh, experience for me to write the first book and then and then to follow it up yeah. uh, several years later. By with the way, one. I've read the book, so everybody needs to read the book, uh, in my opinion, to really know what's going on, or, or, or you really won't have the picture. But what, what are some of the points you'd like the viewers to remember? Well, I describe, I talk about the, the the, the, the fallacious reasons why we invaded Iraq in 03. I described the whole WMD uh, explanation. Uh, I, I, one of the big things, one of the big major themes of my book is how no one is held accountable. There's no accountability. Senior government officials, senior officers, um, I give example after example. I've got about 130 uh, notes, uh, references. Uh, but David Petraeus, I'll just use David Petraeus as a classic example, also a fellow West Pointer, uh, as you and I are. Uh, you know, th th when he was the first commander of the organization that I was assigned to over there, uh, uh, the Multinational Security Transition Command, uh, he lost 190,000 weapons. Some people may have heard about that. He lost 190,000 ak 47s They still don't know where they are, right? They never found them. Yeah. What are some and, other and points like that they need to know? But if I may finish that, yeah. Chuck, and he was promoted twice yeah. after that snafu, yeah. twice, just as an example. Other examples are, you know, uh, uh, George Tenet, uh, the famous, uh, uh, it's a slam dunk, Mr. President, that Saddam's got weapons of mass destruction. Nothing happened. It, you, it, my book gets into example after example, Colin Powell, the president himself, of course. Uh, yeah, it seems Dick Cheney, me, Paul Wolfowitz. Yeah, not to interrupt you, it seems like accountability, to me, after reading your book, accountability, uh, the lack of oversight, and the poor performances by top, you know, people in top positions, civilian, government, and military. You want to talk to those last well, two, the I, oversight? I, I, will, I, I will, the the best example of the lack of accountability and the, and the poor oversight is Paul Bremer. Mm -hmm. um, without question, Paul Bremer's decision to disband the Iraqi army and the Iraqi Ministry of Defense, which was like another army, yeah. uh, was without a doubt. I mean, a okay, after the invasion itself, which was questionable, uh, t t to say it lightly, and the way it was executed, but his decision to disband the Iraqi army and military police uh, led to, what did that create? All these half a million Iraqi soldiers are now out of a job. They can't feed their families. They have their weapons. There's no accountability for their weapons. And now they hate the United States of America. Now that, that's so sad. So where, where did the Al-Qaeda get its recruits? Yeah. Okay, uh, listen, I want to thank you a lot. Absolutely. And uh, Mike, uh, we've got on the screen how you can get his book. I recommend it highly. Uh, I've read it. And uh, back to the desk. All right. Well, 
Yeah, we want to say thank you very much to oh, our own back. Judy Massami. Thanks, thank Judy. Thank you so much, Judy, for all of your uh, great work. Helping us out and sending us uh, the yes. uh, yes. News for Seniors announcements. We appreciate it. Thanks to Dr. Chuck Toftoy and thank his guest. You. And uh, that's a wrap for this edition of the Arlington Weekly News. Anything to else to add before we go? Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. I'll try it again. Uh, thank you. It's, it's, but it's I'm sure the here. viewers might want another Ladies Night edition in the future. <laughs> in the future. In the future. In the future. All, right. <laughs> all right, we got to go. Uh, okay, thanks yes. for watching. Uh, next week, if you're there, we'll be here and we'll do it all again. Have a safe week. Take care. Bye bye.